Dawn in Ladakh, a mountainous region in the north of India, an area known as Little Tibet. As it has been for centuries, the sun rises over the Himalayas, prayer flags stir in the morning air, and a simple way of life begins again. But things are changing. These are the children of the Siddhartha School in the remote village of Stalk. Just 13 years ago when their school was founded, all enrolling students were illiterate. Today, children of all grades, kindergarten through 10th, study in four languages, Hindi, Tibetan, Ladakhi, and English. Their education, this school, it's all part of a larger vision to help these children face the challenges of their changing world while preserving the rich heritage of their unique and vanishing culture. Each day begins with a morning assembly, calisthenics for the body, meditation for the mind, prayers for the spirit. Discipline is stressed and rigorously enforced, especially by the headmaster when he has a chance to return home. His name is Ken Rinpoche Lupsang Setan, and he is both a Buddhist monk and the founder of the Siddhartha School. In the world of Tibetan Buddhism, Ken Rinpoche is a revered figure. Not only is he the current abbot of the Tachilumpo Monastery in southern India by appointment of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, he is also a spiritual leader for much of the Ladakhi region. <laughs> and yet, most of his time is spent working for these children. At 73, he still travels extensively, raising the funds that cover the school's operating expenses each year. It is a labor of love the culmination of his life's work that goes far beyond simply providing a quality education for the children of his village. Ladakh is the border of Tibet. So Tibet had been exiled in 1959, 45 years ago. No? So then we do not know when they were going to get independent. Or maybe we're going to get independent, maybe not. Anyway, the Tibetan culture needs place. They thought that the perfect place is Ladakh. So the, how can I help to contribute to the Tibetan and, uh, culture and uh, uh, teaching? That may be best and uh, offer the children the education. Then they can continue, uh, continue to keep alive the Tibetan culture and the Tibetan education in this area. With the reason, then I started this Siddhartha School. The school opened in 1995 with 25 students in a rented home. At that time, less than 7% of Ladakhi children passed the national proficiency exam in area schools. Today, however, thanks to Ken Rinpoche's efforts and the generosity of supporters worldwide, the Siddhartha School has over 200 students in six buildings, and this year, they graduated their first class, receiving some of the highest marks in the region. In addition to languages, history, math, and Buddhist teachings, the school offers a computer center, a growing library, and a comprehensive science lab. This past year, a health clinic was constructed, and a cafeteria is currently being built. Beyond the classroom, debates are held in multiple languages, and cultural events keep traditional songs, dances, and costumes alive in the community. But there is still much work to do. It costs approximately 55,000 US dollars to run the Siddhartha School each year. This relatively modest sum covers all operating expenses, teacher salaries, and tuition charges for each child who attends. With so much hard work completed and so much success achieved, 
The board of the Siddhartha School Project is now launching an endowment campaign to guarantee the school's survival beyond Ken Rinpoche and into the uncertainty of the future. Life is uncertainty. No, we call the death is certain, time of death is uncertain. I do not know how long you know, I have opportunity to live alive. Something happened for me, you know, you know, we will not make sure we have enough security, teacher salary. Something happened for me, it's going to st stop the school. So therefore, important had the, you know, the endowment. But then, you know, you know something happened to me, school going to be well. You know. Or if you want to become retired, you know, then still you know, have to, you know, don't have to go here, there, all the, all the time. Life in Ladakh is changing, and not always for the better. In the capital city of Leh, in less than 10 years, westernization and rampant development have changed the once rural town into a crowded, sprawling city surrounded by slums, where culture and traditions are just two more commodities for sale. For now at least, just 10 miles to the south, the Siddhartha School and the village of Stok have remained relatively untouched. Shared irrigation ditches still bring water to the barley fields. Homes are still built using available resources. Animals still work side by side with the villagers. And the children are still innocent and open, proud of their world, and thanks to the Siddhartha School, filled with hope for the future. I feel you know, these children are special for me, you know, because my, you know, I've been trained by, you know, in a Buddhist uh, philosophy. We, being as a monk, supposed to think, you know, cares other more important than oneself. Then I love children, especially, you know, these children I consider they see the poor future in uh, Ladakh, in India, in Uqatan. Uh, Bring peace, improve the country. So I think children is uh, important. Another day in Ladakh, and with it, a question. What will the winds of change bring for the children of Stok? Where will they be in 10 years? With your help, the Siddhartha School will continue to provide them the tools they'll need to succeed in a changing world while grounding them in a sense of pride that is deep and enduring. We cannot stop the progress that will surely come. But in their eyes, in these faces, there is the undeniable proof that we are not too late.